I had to pop back in for a minute and show you. This is um, one morning's worth of washing with the basket technique. Um, I, this only took me a little more than an hour, and then, of course, drying time. But look at this. Oh, look at it. Don't you want to just dive in? I know, I know. Um, this one is just as full. So I haven't weighed it, but guaranteed there's four ounces or better here. Um, so, you know, I have a great spool to uh, spin. You know, I'll be able to fill a spool up. It just came out wonderful. You know, I did open some of the tips um, as I laid it in the basket, the ones that were a little bit stuck. But look at the crimp still left, you see? This is what we're talking about when we say get to know your fiber and spin it as is. I was able to wash it and still keep it as it presents itself off the sheep. So that's pretty exciting and a fun way to spin. So there you have it. The final outcome of my morning's basket washing day. <laughs> okay, thanks again. I have some merino here that is pretty dirty on the tips, and I'm going to show you. All right, can you see this? See how stuck together that is? I'm thinking uh, I'm going to try and experiment with this. I'm going to take these. Now, normally I would wash these um, one by one uh, by hand. I would, you know. So I'm going to try stacking these in my basket. I'm trying to preserve this. I'm trying to preserve, eat, you know, at least some of those individual clumps like that. That's what I'm going for. Uh, and so that's why, that's why we're doing this exercise. But if I just were to lay these pieces in the basket, these tips I don't believe would get clean. So I'm laying them in this, I'm running them through the side here, about halfway through and stacking them. And now I'm going to try washing them and see if that will hold them well enough together and yet allow me to manipulate these ends a little bit more so that they get clean. And now I'm going to submerge my fiber in the basket. I'm going to let it absorb some water just like that. The basket is holding everything in place. Now you can already see the cut side here is pretty clean. It doesn't need a lot of washing. So I am going to just put a little bit in there, but I'm going to put quite a bit of this on the outside. That I'm just barely letting, I'm barely touching that part. And these outside parts here, these parts, I'm going to just let sit now for a moment. So here we are, this is soaked already for quite a little bit. And now what I'm going to do is just going to take these tips that were a little sticky and dirty and I'm going to work on them a little bit. Um, I don't really want them to felt but sometimes being able to just play with the tips that are sticking out, rubbing them a little bit between your fingers, just that anything that seems particularly dirty, quite of this has soaked, quite a bit of this has already soaked out which is wonderful. But because I have it in the basket this way, it's very nice to be able to just manipulate the tips a little bit more than the cut end. And to know that the basket is holding everything in place, that's working quite nicely. But now I can rinse that. So here we are rinsing it. The tips look very clean, so I think we're in, in very good shape. I'll show you what that looks like when we take it out. Take this out. So now when I remove these, I could either dab this with a towel, okay, a little bit at a time, and when I take these out, like this, you can see they're still held exactly in place, and the tips are quite clean. Here's the basket that I pulled some locks through. And I pulled the locks through the edge because the inside of the locks is pretty clean, but the outside tips get a little dirtier, and this will stand up, this fiber will stand up 
to a little bit of manipulation here. So I can manipulate the ends of these locks a little bit, work something through there to get them a little bit cleaner, and not, not get them messed up. And you can try this too with various fibers. The nice thing about doing a small batch like this is that if you do make a mistake and you agitate too much or you do something with the fiber, you won't ruin your whole batch. It'll just be this little bit. Now here's something that I will do with my fiber only because it, I have handled it for a long time and I know what it can stand up to. I would not advise doing this you know, to a large quantity of fiber because you might ruin it, but with me, I'm going to actually spray this, the tips. And if I have tips that are really, really dirty, the spraying of, the, just the action of the spray removes that sticky, crusty business that's on there. And as I say, I know with my fiber that it will stand up to that and it won't be ruined. And then I'll just squeeze it out. And you can do that with, uh, with some fibers, but you can't do it with all fibers, so be very careful. Maybe experiment a little bit with yours and see how it, how it stands up. Here we are. I filled up my utility sink with very warm water, and I'm adding a couple of drops of detergent, some of my own fiber, from my sheep, which I'm just going to let settle in there. Now the reason I put the uh, detergent in after the water was filled is because you don't really want it to have a lot of bubbles. All that foam isn't really what you're looking for. Um, so I have some of my fiber there and I'm just letting it submerge. It might not, it might need a little poke down, but it might just be fine on its own. Usually the wool absorbs all that water. And I'll show you how I laid it out. Now this is some raw fin. And I just took, you know, the locks from the Wensleydales and the Teeswaters are really easy because you can see them so clearly. And sometimes they actually fall apart in, in locks. So the first thing you want to do with your fiber, of course, is take a good look at it. Make sure that it is fiber that uh, has some integrity. In other words, it doesn't have any breaks in it, which means to test for a break, you usually will take the fiber and do this to it. It should snap, but not break. Uh, if an animal has been sick or, or under some stress or maybe the weather has been really bad, uh, sometimes the fiber will break when you do that. You don't want that to happen because then when you're spinning it, it won't be, you know, it will manifest itself in the yarns and spinning. So you want to make sure you've chosen a good fiber and you definitely want to be sure that your fiber does not have vegetable matter in it. Now it'll always have a little bit because it's a natural product. So a little bit is absolutely fine. But you'll notice if you've done this before you'll know what I mean when I say a lot of vegetable matter. It's as though somebody took a, a bottle of oregano and sprinkled it on here and then moved it in, all the little teeny weeny pieces really embed themselves in the fiber. If it has a lot of vegetable matter in it, it's very difficult to get some of it out. The bigger pieces, you know, if you get a little piece of hay in there, that's, that's fine. That will drop out when you're spinning or while you're doing this, certainly, um, as you're picking the locks to put in your basket. The basket is very nice because it does help to hold the, uh, the locks or the bundles of fiber still in the water and they don't tend to wander all over the place and float around, uh, which will keep the integrity and it will keep the fibers all running in the same direction so that you can then decide once you're done how you want to spin it and you'll have a lot of choices. Now you can certainly wash this way and then card or comb. You know, that's fine. If that's what you want to do, that's absolutely fine. This might be a little tedious. If you're going to car card or comb your fiber, you really don't need to have it laid out this way. This assures you that the fibers are all running in the same direction and that you will have, if you want to use these locks for whether it be felting 
or lock spinning, or knitting with locks, or thrumming, or you know, all, all kinds of, of other interesting things. You want to lay them out this way. If you're going to lock spin it, it's nice to lay them out this way. Uh, but again, you don't have to. You can take your fiber, obviously, and just put it into the water. And we'll let that soak in the water that way to show you that. It'll be a little different than this. This holds the lock. Already you can see the water is lightly soiled but certainly not heavily soiled. This fiber was quite clean to begin with. Now you will have skirted it already. You want to, skirting is just removing all of the really dirty bits. If there were any tags or bits of, uh, you know, any, any unpleasant materials from around the back end of the sheep or the, you'd remove that. It's, you don't want to be dealing with that in any case and you don't need to be washing that out. You just throw that out. So there we have it drained. I can still see a little soap in this one. So I'm going to rinse one more time. And you want to make sure the water is a similar temperature. If you've been using quite warm water, stay with it. Don't let cold water come in because that drastic change of temperature can really felt your fiber. Now there's nothing wrong with having a little bit of soap left. In your fiber. It's not going to hurt your fiber at all. But I just want to make sure that it is completely... Goodbye. Look how clear the water is. Okay, that pretty much tells me that I'm done. Drain that out. Now again, depending on your fiber, you uh, don't want to handle some of it almost at all. That's it. My Wensleydale and most of the long wools actually stand up pretty well and you can squeeze the water out of them and it, that won't mat them up. And then you can sort of lightly put it on a towel. You can take one and put it into the other and stack them this way. push the water out of them. You just want to be careful because some of those finer wools will begin to felt. See how just pushing that down it mats it a little bit. Now you're going to take it out very carefully. They're all lined up. Those locks are all lined up. Maybe let that, I'm going to pat that in a towel. I could have stood to let this drain a little bit more because I can feel how much water is in that. But I don't really want to squeeze too much of it because I don't want to get it matted. I'm going to put it in a towel. Like this, let it sit on the towel for a minute and pat it. Just lets the towel absorb a lot of that water and then the fiber will be ready to shake a little bit and lay out to dry. Okay, so we're going to start now with the merino. You can see here, this is the merino that we washed in the basket. And the reason we did it that way, we laid out the locks so that they would all be in a uniform direction. And you can see all of these came out that way. Now you can fluff them up a little bit if you want to. So if you're looking to work with fiber that is laid out in one direction, do it like this. If you're looking to work with fiber that is not laid out all in one direction, you're not looking for a lock bundle, uh, this was just put into the sink. But again, there's no right and wrong. It's just what is your end product? What are you looking for to work with and for what purpose? Here we have the fin. Uh, again, here this has been washed in the baskets so that the result is these locks are still uh, in their original formation. Let's see if I can pull one out here for you to see. Let's see, we'll take one of these. So if you're looking to work with a fin lock, wash it in the basket. If this is what you're looking for, you'll get a nice straight fiber. If you're looking to work with this, this was just lightly washed in the water without the basket and you can see 
how nice this is. You could spin this. It's more like roving. You could easily draft and spin this. Okay, move over here to the Wensleydale. And again, here's the Wensleydale. And again, these were lined up in the basket and washed so that all of the locks are stay in the same direction and the integrity of that lock is preserved. So if you're looking to work with lock at a time or if you wanted to spin this all going in the same direction, this was done in the basket. This is done, just was just done loosely. Now the Wensleydale is a little easier. After you've watch, washed it, you can frequently pull these locks out even after you've washed them and lay them out if you wanted to. But this fiber tends to have a more uh, a curl that likes to hold its own structure much more readily so you'll still have some locks and you're finished so you can still do that with this type of fiber now with this this is uh, Icelandic and with the Icelandic this was what we laid out in the basket so the locks quote locks are all organized this was just washed in the water next to the basket. You can still, if you wanted to take some of these out, you still can pull them out, but it's a little harder because they've, they've cross-fibered a little bit. Again, you could spin this. Oh, what fun to spin this. Just pull it apart and spin it like that. Leave some texture and leave some pieces out. A oh, lot of fun. So it's a matter of what kind of yarn you want to produce and what you want to end up with. So now you have your basket technique. Hope you enjoy it. Have fun.